Let's take our Bible to the book of Exodus chapter 33 today. As we have been studying the biographical preach, uh, studies this, uh, this week, we have completed, uh, we have studied about Enoch, the man who walked with God. Last Sunday we talked about Abraham, the man who was called the friend of God. Today we will be talking about one of the most important characteristics of the Bible. A man whose life was very much in simile with the life of Jesus Christ. Moses in the Old Testament shows us a lot of things that's more resembling to the life of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. We are talking about Moses today. But I have to apologize because if I'm going to talk about Moses today, I, I don't think we'll be able to finish it within a couple of minutes, in 60 minutes. To, uh, to talk about Moses, we need to, we need to have days and days. Because there's a lot of stuff about Moses in the Bible. What I'm going to do is just give you a nutshell and just, and just uh, uh, tell you about a, some of the most important characteristics of the life of Moses that you and I can benefit in our Christian life. Moses was a man with whom God spoke as a friend. Moses... The man with whom God spoke as a friend. In the Bible, the book of Exodus chapter 33, verse number 11, the Bible says, And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. Amen. Shall we call the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you, God, this morning. We come into your presence, O oh God. We come to ask you to speak to us and encourage us this morning. Fill us with thy spirit, O oh God. Speak to our hearts this morning and encourage us. Help us to see the life of Moses and apply it to our life that we may be more like you, O oh God. I pray that Thou would give us a receptive heart and an alert mind. O oh God, I also do pray that Thou will fill me with Thy Holy Spirit. Touch my tongues with Thy words, O oh God. Cover me behind Thy powerful hand. So God, I as a simple vessel over here may be used to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Give me the words of utterance. Fill me with Thy power and with Thy Spirit. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Amen. Moses, the man with whom God spoke as a friend. We just read in book of Exodus chapter 33 verse number 11. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. As a man speaketh unto his friend. Here is a wonderful thing that we see. We don't read about any other man. But we see about Moses... And we talk about God speaking to Moses face to face as with a friend. In another word we can say Moses was a friend of God. Amen. Amen. Moses, the friend of God. What is so important about Moses that we can see today? We see about the beginning of Moses. We see the beginning of Moses. Let me remind you, Moses was a, M M Moses is a man. Again, as we see, Moses is a man who went into the tabernacle or went into a certain place and was able to hear the voice of God and talk to God just as a friend or just as you are hearing my voice today. He had a very special position in the Bible. Moses spoke, or God spoke to Moses as a friend. But then he had some kind of beginnings. His beginning was not a wonderful, a most comfortable beginning. We see in the book of Exodus chapter number 2, we see the beginning of Moses. What happened to Moses? How was he born? And what happened, in, what happened to him? In the book of Exodus chapter 2, verse number 2. 
And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes, bulrushes and dubbed it with slime and with peach. And put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. Come to verse number 10. And the child grew when she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter. And he became her son. And she called his name Moses. And she said, Because I drew him out of the water. The story here is Pharaoh has ordered to destroy, to kill all the Hebrew male child over here. To kill all the male child. And so now here is the child that's born and the child looks very godly. And the child is male and he will be killed very soon. Because Pharaoh has ordered to kill. Here is a woman. She conceived, and she conceived, and she bare a son, not a daughter, a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him in three months. Why? Because he would be killed. And she could no longer hide him now, and she, she, took, him, she, she took for him an ark of bulrushes, and dabbed it with slime and with peach, and put a child therein, and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. Now, uh, I'm not going deep down, you can read when you go home. He was put on the river, and, uh, and, 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 she, and she hid herself, and she watched, her sister watched, where the ark is going, with the baby inside the ark. And as the ark was moving in the water towards a certain direction, there comes the daughter of Pharaoh to have bath in the river. And the maid and the ch and the and then other lady who was with the with the Pharaoh's daughter, she says, "There is something in the ark. Can I go and see?" And so the Pharaoh's daughter says, "Okay, go and see." And then she goes and sees there is a male child in the ark. And the child is now brought. And Pharaoh's daughter sees the child and she is now ordered to bring the child to the palace. God has a plan for this child. God planned about his life. God has, God has, a, God has his hands over him right from the time he is born. And the Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. Now you see, what happened was, Moses, the mother of Moses is brought into the palace to nurse Moses. Because he's an Hebrew child. And so Pharaoh's daughter has ordered to bring a Hebrew woman to nurse the child so he can be grown. And so they go and bring the mother of Moses, though they do not know who that lady is. She is now in the palace nursing Moses. And Moses is growing. Verse number 10 says, And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter. And he became her son. And she called his name Moses. And she said, because I drew him out of the water. Moses means the child that is drawn out of the water. As you read down the story here, you, you find immediately, uh, it, it says that this guy was in, uh, this little baby was in the ark, and now he is brought with the Pharaoh's daughter, and Moses' mother is brought over here to nurse Moses, and as Moses is grown, the mother brings Moses to Pharaoh's daughter, and Moses is now a grown up man. 
is grown up in the palace. He ate the good food to, that he ate, that he wants to eat. He wears the best clothes that he wants to wear. He has the education. He has everything. He's grown strong. He has grown in wisdom. He's grown in knowledge. He's grown in strength. He's grown with the riches. He's grown with comfort. He's grown with everything that ain't an individual who desires to live with comfort and wealth. He has all that now. But then suddenly he realizes something. He has now come to an age to realize that he is not a child of Pharaoh's daughter. He is not, not an Egyptian, but he is an Hebrew child. And so one day he goes out and he sees two people fighting. And one is an Egyptian, the other is the Hebrew. Verse number 11, And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, that he went out into his brethren, and looked on their burdens, and he spied an Egyptian smiling an Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of Hebrews, who is that? Two men of the Hebrews strode, strode together and he said to him that he did the wrong. Wherefore smited thou thy fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killest, killedest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this man is known. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelled in the land of Midian and he sat down by a well. We see Moses over here, he comes and he puts his own spark. He kills an Egyptian. Well, we see a patriotism over he, in him. We see he kills the Egyptian because he was striving or fighting with his brethren who is an Hebrew. And the next day, uh, and he kills an Egyptian. The next day he goes, he finds two Hebrews fighting. And they say, do you want to kill us like you killed that Egyptian yesterday? And now the news is spread to the Pharaoh in the palace. And Pharaoh is really angry. And now Pharaoh wants to kill Moses. And Moses flies. Moses goes to Midian. And there he sits near the well and there comes a girl and, and she comes with a sheep and Moses puts water and, 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 and pours water for the sheep and she goes home early and tells her father, the father comes and he invites the Moses to the house and he gets married to the daughter of this man. He's in the wilderness for 40 years. Moses is 40 years when he fled into Midian. He's for 40 years in Egypt now. From his child, from his birth. He's, uh, he's grown up in the palace. He had all that he wanted for 40 years. And after 40 years, that incident takes place. He runs into Midian. And there, for 40 years, he is taking care of the sheep. Moses, God used Moses. God, God used these 40 years to teach Moses that Moses. The first 40 years you thought you are somebody. But you know what? I want to use you. And I cannot use you until you come to a point where you realize that you are nobody. Amen? Amen. God cannot use you if you think that you are somebody. And God cannot use you if you think that you know everything. God cannot use you if you think that you have all the strength that you have. God cannot use you if you think that you have. You can do all this by your own self. God cannot use anybody. Until you come to a point to realize that you are nobody. Amen. Amen. Now Moses, who was somebody, is in the wilderness, he's in Midian, and now he is for 40 years taking up the care of the sheep, and he realizes that he is nobody from a prideful Moses. Now he's become a humble Moses. Amen? Amen. For 40 years, God used to train him. 
God destroyed his pride. God made him meek. God made him humble. God stripped away all his pride and all that his wealth and everything because God wanted to use Moses. God had a plan right from the time he was born. He is now put in an ark and he is brought to the palace. He is given everything that he wants to have to grow up to be a man of God. And now, and, and now Moses almost started thinking, man, I have everything. I'm somebody. He got a kick on his back. God teaches him that he is nobody. Amen. Amen. He becomes nobody for the next 40 years in Midian. But as he was in that place, in Exodus chapter 3, 3 we see something great. In Acts chapter 3, now Moses kept the flock of Zethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. He is now taken, he is taking the flock and he's gone to be in the back of the mountain. He comes to a place. I was thinking about this yesterday as I was reading again. What in the world this bush might have never even dreamt in the wildest dream that bush would be mentioned in the Bible. Amen. You see, let me tell you, not everybody can be Moses, but everybody can be that bush. Amen. Man, I would rather be a bush of God for at least a day. And have God come upon me and burn and, and be a flame on me and not be burned. Just be a vessel where, where it carries God. That's like a donkey that carried Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. A bush. Where, where people walked around it many a time. The flock went. The ships went. They might have eaten it up uh, sometimes. Moses might have stamped over it. Or, or something might have happened. But here is a day that's special. Now Moses has come. The back of the mountain. To that place. And he sees the angel of the Lord. The Bible says. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire. Or the mist. Of a bush. And he looked. And behold. The bush burned with fire. And the bush was not consumed. It's good to be desired. It's good to desire to become like Moses. But it's not wrong to say. Lord I would like to be a bush sometime. Amen. Amen. I would like you to come upon me. Your God with all your power upon me. I would rather be a bush. In the back of the mountain. Than to be an oak tree. In the palace of evil. Amen. Amen. God used this ordinary bush to do an extraordinary job. Anyway, we'll not go into the bush. We need to talk about Moses today. And Moses said, I now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. And he said, draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Moses had an encounter with God. Back of the mountain. When he was taking care of the flocks. He had a beginning in an ark. Now he has an encounter back of the mountain where the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in the flame of fire and the fire did not burn the bush. 
he had an encounter with God. God spoke to him as a friend. Now you know the story, Moses, uh, uh, the Bible says, and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see God call unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here am I. And he said, draw not neither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place where thou, whereon thou standest is a holy ground. Whatever he said, I am the God of Thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, and the Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I surely, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmaster, for I know their sorrow. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of Egyptians, and to bring them out Bring them up out of the land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey. What was lacking for Moses? Moses had everything, right? He grew up in a palace. He had everything. And now Moses is in the wilderness, is in Midian. Sometimes, my dear friends, let me tell you. You have an encounter with God in the most difficult times of your life. Amen. Amen. You will have an encounter with God in the most sorrowful days of your life. <laughs> Moses did not have an encounter with God in the pillars. He had an encounter with God in the mount behind the mountain. When he was taking care of the flock. God was training Moses to take care of the flock because very soon, Moses, you're not taking care of these little animal flocks, but very soon I'm going to use you to take care of the people of Israel to lead them as a shepherd. Moses enjoyed everything in the palace, but he had no encounter with God. In order to use him, God had to bring him and humble him and in the midst of all difficulties, he had an encounter with God. Amen. Amen. Let me encourage you. And as I encourage you, may I encourage myself. God will draw more closer to you. And you will draw more closer to God in your most difficult hours of life. If you are willing to draw closer to Him. Amen. You will have most, you will have the most sweetest fellowship with God in the wilderness or behind the mountain, back of the mountain, on the bush, than in the oak tree in a palace of Pharaoh. He had an encounter with God. What was God doing him? God was humbling him. And humbling him and humbling and when it was time to be used God gave an encounter to him Moses had an encounter with God and so now we are, I'm just keeping I'm just keeping okay we cannot go through all the chapters and so much the whole book of Exodus is about Moses I don't think I'll be able to do that and so now Moses is brought back he has come to Egypt God tells Moses, go tell Pharaoh, take Aaron, your brother, tell Pharaoh to leave the people of Israel. And no, Pharaoh is not willing. And so God hardens his heart and shows all the miracles and all the plagues are done over there. And now finally, the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb, the people of Israel are left, are set free from Egypt. And so they come out of Egypt, they cross the Red Sea by faith, and now they are walking out. Moses also had the same struggle that every leader has the struggle today, yesterday, today, and, every, and forever, every leader will have. Moses had a struggle too. Now the people are out. Moses is leading them. 
In, in Exodus chapter 17, we see the struggle with his people. He is not struggling with unbelievers, he is struggling with his own people. He has a problem with his own people. He actually does not have, the people have a problem with him. In book of Exodus chapter 17, if you read the Bible tells us in verse number 3, I'll read from verse 1. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to the commandment of the Lord and pitched in Rephidim. And there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore the people did chide with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide ye with me? Wherefore do ye tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? You see, the people forgot what happened in the past. These people forgot that Moses, Moses who grew up in palace, now gave up everything, and he is is in the is in the wilderness, is in the Midian, he was in the Midian, and he and, and he encountered God, and he came now because God sent him to deliver the people of Israel who were slaves to the Egyptians, and they are out, not no more as slaves, and now they are out of Egypt, and God opened the Red Sea, and they walked through the Red Sea. They saw with their naked eyes, they walked in the dry land through the Red Sea. They saw this great miracle. They escaped the enemies. <laughs> they saw this miracle. And now they are thirsty, they could not trust God for water. Man, a God who blows his breath and divides the Red Sea, don't you think he can... Quench your thirst without murmuring and without complaining. But these people are not the murmuring and complaining and, and fighting against Moses. Hey Moses, why did you bring you? Why did you bring us here in this wilderness to kill us without water? People of Israel. Don't you have faith that God delivered you out of Egypt? Don't you have faith that God draw, brought you out of the Red Sea on a dry land? Don't you remember? And how soon have you doubted God and how soon you fight against the servant of God? This, Moses had his struggle. Moses had his struggle with people. In Numbers chapter 16 verse 41, the people are saying, But on the morrow all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, He have killed the people of the Lord. Blame is always on the servant of God now. Being a leader is not an easy task. God told Moses to do something. Moses obeys God. And Moses brings the people of Israel out of that land of slavery. And they are now out of the land of slavery. And God took them through the dry land of, um, from the, and through the Red Sea. They saw this great miracle. They saw this, the sea, the water as a wall on the both side. And the, and the land is dried. And they are walking through the land. And the water is up as a wall. But that would not drown them. And they would not die. Die, but they are walking in the dry land. They just forgot everything. They just forgot the salvation that God gave through the red, R-E-D, red. See, a picture of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. They forgot about it. They forgot that once they were slaves and now they are redeemed. They forgot about it. They forgot that they would be they have been beaten by Pharaoh's people and they were tortured and persecuted and now they are free from that bondage of slavery. They forgot everything about it. Isn't that same story with Christians today? 
God saves us from the bondage of sin. God brought, God brings us out of Egypt. And now God is taking us. And God has washed us with the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you have crossed that land from sin to the Savior. From curse into blessing. And then suddenly some trials comes in our life. And then, wow. We start complaining and murmuring against God. And if possible, even against the servant of God. Now that's what happens in our day and age. The modern day Israelites. But here they started complaining and they, now they are blaming him for the death of these people. You and Aaron has brought us and you killed our people. Poor Moses is just doing what God told him to do. He has so much of struggle as a leader. His life when he was born. He had a struggle in the ark. And then he grew up a comfortable life in the palace. And now he had struggle in the Midian. I mean, he was not enjoying the wealth and the comfort. But he's in Midian. Among the pagans. and Taking care of the sheep. And God was humbling him and making him meek and training him up. And when he was ready, God gives him an encounter and he is prepared. God calls him, sends him, he, brings, he obeys God. He has some problems, he obeys God then. And then he brings the people of Egypt out after a long time of struggle with Pharaoh. People of Israel are out now. They saw all these miracles. Just because of water, they could not trust God now. And so they blame Moses. They blame Moses. We see his, we saw his beginning. We saw his encounter with God. We see his struggle with the people. I'm just giving you two places. There are so many places you know you have read the Bible. Now we see the opposition from within. Opposition from within. Moses had opposition, not from Egypt. He has opposition from the people of Israel, from within the congregation. Come to book of Numbers chapter 16. My beloved, I pray this morning, as I preach this word, uh, as the Lord speaks to you through this servant, I pray that you be aware of your life, your Christian life, that you will encounter day by day. There will be a lot of things, the temptations in life where you will be stirred up to speak against the servant of God and people of God and your church and your people. And you will be stirred up by the devil to do that. And you will even come to a position where you think that you're more powerful and you have no more, you know more now. You'll come to that position and you better be careful when that thing comes. Because that's what is happening here in Numbers chapter 16. And let your prayer be, Lord, make me humble. Help me to be like that bush who was willing to allow you to come as a flame of fire. Not everybody can be Moses, but all of you and I can become a bush for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let our prayer be, Lord, make me a bush. And let God raise someone over here to be Moses. Maybe you, maybe you, maybe you, maybe you. And let us not be jealous about a brother that should be taken up and made a Moses in our congregation. But let us all be content and let us say, Lord, I'm willing to be that bush behind that mountain. And an ordinary bush doing an extraordinary job. Lord, I'm willing to be that donkey upon which Jesus rode. It takes humility to rise up, beloveds. To rise up, the first step to rise up is to sink below. Amen. The first step to rise up is to sink below. See in Numbers chapter 16. And now Korah, verse number 1. The sons of Izar, the son of Kohad, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Pelet, sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses. 
with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. Verse number 3. And they gathered themselves together against Moses, and against Aaron, and said unto them, It take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves about the congregation of the Lord. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face, and he spake unto Korah and unto all the company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are he is, and who is holy, and, and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him whom he has chosen, will he cause to come near unto him. Then we see how, the, how Moses is telling, how, the, how you will find out, you know, who are in God's side, and who are in the other side. And the earth opens up, and... Solos Korah and his followers. The earth opens up and they are swallowed. You know why? Because they thought, now they know everything. They thought they are more powerful than Moses. They thought that they have everything that they need to do. And so now they are attacking Moses. Moses, you are exalting yourself now. You think you are a pastor? You think you are a leader? You think you only know everything? I know everything. And see, all these people know everything. And you don't have to be a leader of ours. The problem right from the book of Genesis chapter 1 onwards to Revelation chapter 22, the problem is the authority. People don't like authority. People don't like to submit to authority. God, Moses did not say, Lord, 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 please, please. You know what? I want to be a leader. No. He did not do. God chose him to be a leader. Amen. Amen. God chose him to be a leader. And God called him to be a leader. And Moses is doing what God told him to do. But when everything is going on well, the Satan will come and store up some people within the congregation, beloved. His, his opposition was within the congregation. When things come in this way and in this fashion, realize where it is coming from. From the Lord or from the devil. Realize. Oh brother, we, we are King James Bible believing Christian. We should not be having problem. That's where the problem will come more. Amen. We are every Sunday hard preaching. That's where the problem will come more. Problem came in the life of Moses and the congregation of Israel from within. Moses did not become a leader. God made him a leader. But now the problem has come. Satan is everywhere. Satan wants to do that. Are you planning to follow the footsteps of some Korahs? Don't be a Korah. Don't be a Korah. They gather themselves together unto Moses. And so we find there's a problem. Uh, uh, we find... Oh, where's the verse? There's another verse there. Okay, there's other places where the Bible tells God opened the earth and uh, opened the earth and swallowed them up. See in verse number 18. Verse number 17, And take every man his censer, and put incense in them, and bring ye before the Lord every man his censer, two hundred and fifty censer, thou also and Aaron, each of you his censer. And they took every man his censer, and put fire in them, and laid incense thereon, and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, Separate yourself from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces and said, O oh God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? 
The Lord speak unto Moses saying, Speak unto the congregation saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And Moses rose and went, went, rose up and went unto Dathan and Abiram. And the elders of Israel followed him and he spake unto the congregation saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of this wicked man and touch nothing of the earth, lest he be consumed in all this sin. So they got, got up, get up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram on every side and they then Abraham came out and stood in the door of the tents and their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby is shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all, the, all these works, for I have not done them of my own hand. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord has, sent, has not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open the mouth, and swallow them up with all that, all that appertain unto them, then go down quick into the pit. Then he shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave a sender that was under them. And the earth opened the mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that are pertain unto Korah and all their goods. Moses did not have an easy, easy, easy road of his journey. He had his own people against him. He had his own people collecting other, the congregation against Moses and, Moses and Aaron. It is so easy sometimes to preach against and speak against and, and draw crowd against a servant whom God uses. It's very easy. Because Satan is the one who raises such congregations to fight against the cause of Christ. This, in this day and age, God may not open up the ground, the earth and swallow the people who are against the man of God or against the church of God, or against the congregation of God. God may not do that because it's endure, it's, but we are living in a grace period. But that is not a license for us to do as we want because in a, there's a day that's going to come. You and I will stand before the Lord for judgment. And that will be more dangerous than what it was during the time of Korah. You don't want to be Korah. You don't want to be those people who followed Korah. You don't want to be a man and a woman who, uh, who, who kindles the anger of God. You want to be a bush back of the mountain. Amen? Humble, submissive, willing, committed. And dedicated for the cause of Christ. Oh, brothers, his oppositions were from within. It was not only from the people of Korah, <laughs> he had his from, from his own family. He had opposition from his own family. That's what Moses' life is all about. Moses did not have a bed of roses. In the book of Numbers chapter 12, his sister <coughs> thinks she's too smart now. Numbers chapter 12, verse number 1, And Miriam and Aaron speak against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Has he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. You can say whatever you want. I can say whatever against you in my heart. God will hear it. And God is going to judge me. You say whatever against a man of God and a woman of God and a servant of God and the congregation of God in your heart and think nobody knows and your phone calls and your text messages when you speak against a church member or a pastor you think nobody knows. God knows it. God heard it. Amen? Amen. For he had, and, and, and they said, Has the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Has he not spoken also by yours? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses 
was very meek about all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come out ye there three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth and he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. And my servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall be, shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud, you see, I'm not trying to scare you off, beloveds. In this day and age, you speak against me or you speak against your brother or you speak against your sister. God may not deal with you the way he dealt in the Old Testament. So I'm making it very clear. I'm not saying you say something against me, God is going to judge you and some bad things up against or I speak against you and God is going to judge me or bad things will happen. I'm not saying that's going to happen. Don't be, I'm not trying to scare you off. It may not happen the way it happened in the Old Testament. But it will destroy your spiritual life. It will make you miserable. And if I'm against you and, I, and if I'm trying to bad mouth against you, you know what's going to happen to me? My spiritual life will be destroyed. You're going to live a miserable spiritual life. I'm not trying to be like some preachers who say, Hey, don't touch the anointed. No. I'm not trying to do that. That's not the truth. When he's wrong, he's wrong. When you're wrong, you're wrong. Amen. Verse number 10, And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous. Leprous is a picture of sin in the New Testament. Leprosy is a picture of sin in the Bible. And when you do anything like that, when I do anything like that, all that you and I do is live in sin, and walk in sin, and destroy our spiritual life, because we live in sin. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous. Why? Because she spoke against Moses. And Miriam became leprous, white as snow, and Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Wow! They realized. That's a sign of a good Christian. Repent, confess, and get right. Just think about Moses. Think about the burden that he's carrying, beloveds. Think about the life that he's having right now. He's not enjoying it. He's, he's serving the Lord. But his own congregation and his own family members are against him. Thank the Lord, God is by the side of Moses. Amen? Amen. That's why the Bible says, who shall, who, who, you know, what say? When God is for us, who can be against us? Amen? Amen. The congregation was drawn by Korah was against Moses, but God was with, was with Moses. Aaron and Miriam was against Moses. But God was with Moses. Try to be like Moses. Try to be like Moses. By humbling ourselves and committing our life to the cause of Christ. God will be beside you and me all the days of our life. Amen? Amen. God will be with you and me. Let's see the outstanding nature of Moses. As we finish it off now. I know there's so much a miracle that he did. We cannot go into that. I'm just giving a nutshell. We have seen his beginning. We have seen his encounter with God. We have seen his struggle with the people. We have seen his opposition from within. From the congregation and from the family. And now let us see the outstanding nature of Moses. What made Moses... Moses. Amen. Amen. Oh yeah. <laughs> what made Moses a friend of God? 
what made Moses the friend of God? Yeah, the message was very serious. Good, right, brother? <laughs> what made Moses a friend of God? What made, Moses, what, what made God speak to Moses as a friend face to face? Numbers chapter 12, verse number 3. I purposely read it faster and quicker when we read first. Because I wanted to strike on that again. The outstanding character of Moses, he was meek. Amen? Amen. He was meek. Read what it says. Read what the Bible says in verse number 3. Now, the man... <laughs> Now, not before when he was in the palace. Now, you want to be humble? You want to be humble? You want to be humble? You know what God is going to do? He's going to break you to make you humble. Amen? Amen. Oh, yeah, you may face failures to make you humble. You may find opposition in your life. To make you humble. Amen? Amen. When slightly some horns start coming on your head, God will strike a hammer on it. Oh, it's painful. Remember, God is trying to make you humble. Amen? Amen. Not only with you, it's the same with me. Now, <laughs> Moses is meek. Not when he was in the palace. Now the man Moses was very meek about all the men which were upon the face of the earth. About all the men, among all the men which were upon the face of the earth. The whole of the universe in those days, Moses was the meekest man. God removed that somebody, took him to the no, to take him, took him to the Midian to make him and teach him to be nobody. And then God brought him among the people of Israel and taught him that God is everybody. I mean, God is everything. Amen. He was something, and God made him nothing. To teach him that God is everything to him. Amen. Amen. We sing that song. He is my everything. He is my all. Right? He is my everything. When you don't really recognize that God is everything to you. God will take you into a wilderness wandering. To teach you that you who think that you are something. Is nothing. And now that you realize that you are nothing. That God is everything to you. Amen. Do you get it? Yes. Remember that. Young people. You are walking on the dangerous path. Dangerous age. And the most wonderful age. An age where you can commit your life to God. And be totally powerful at this age. Or at the age where you can be rebellious. And destroy yourself. Some of you are rebellious against your parents, rebellious against your teachers. You better understand that you are nothing and recognize God as everything to you. Amen? Amen. Recognize God to be everything to you. You want to be Moses? Become nothing. If you want to be Moses, be nothing. And recognize God to be everything. Amen? Amen? Now the man Moses was very meek about all the, men, about all the men which are upon the face of the earth. Secondly, his outstanding nature was he was a prayer warrior. He was a prayer warrior. You know what he did? He never asked God anything for himself. But when these people of Israel, they complained and murmured against Moses and they were going to stone, God's anger was kindled and God was angry and God wants to, wanted to destroy the people of Israel and God told Moses, hey, Moses, I'm going to destroy them tomorrow. You know what Moses would do? 
you will fall on his face and cry out unto God and say, Lord, please forgive them. Let nothing b- b- bad happen to them. Amen. Amen. This is a sign of a leader. Praying for his congregation even when they are against him. You know what Moses is doing? In the book of Exodus chapter 32, verse number 32, Yet now if thou will forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee out of thy book which thou hast written. I was saying, Lord, you brought me out from that place. You took, you sent me out of the spellers, and you took me into that median, and you brought me back, and you told me to bring the people of Israel out now, and I brought them out now because you led, did that to me, and now you're trying to kill them. And you want to kill them, then first you kill me and blot my name out of thy book. You see the dangerous prayer he's praying? You know, the prayer that led him to pray was a love for the congregation. Amen? Amen. He was a prayer warrior. He will wrestle against God and say, Lord, you are not going to do that. Forgive them. Look at the life of Moses. In spite of all the struggles in life, opposition, he's now praying for his own enemies. Wow. Isn't that a beautiful character of a man? Of a Christian? Why, how do you pray when you pray? Don't pray some bad things to happen to your enemies. Pray to God to convict them. To bring them in the right place. Amen? Amen. Finally, I want to touch on a very important subject. He was radical and passionate about his calling. He was meek. He was a prayer warrior. He was radical and passionate about his calling. This is the summary of the life of Moses. If you understand this, you know all about Moses. Come to the book of Hebrews. Chapter 11. In Hebrews chapter 11, we'll see verse number 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. And we close over here. Hebrews chapter 11 is known for faith. Amen? Amen. And Moses is mentioned in this book, in this chapter. Where was Moses brought up in? In the palace. By faith, verse number 23. By faith. Hey, without faith it is impossible to please God. Amen. Amen. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Choosing. Hey, not predestined. Choosing. Rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. Than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ. Greater riches than the treasure in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. What made Moses to forsake, forsook the riches of Egypt? Wow, what a life he was living. He had the most comforting life in the palace, the best of food. He had everything that he wanted. 
By faith Moses when he was come to years. Refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. When you come to understand the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. You should, be re you should refuse to be called. A pagan. An idol worshipper. A Roman Catholic. Or an idolater. Or a cult. And you follow the Bible. Amen. Amen. By faith Moses. Hey brother but I don't understand everything. You don't have to understand everything. You need to believe the book. Amen. Amen. By faith Moses when he was come to yours. Refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. Than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. What a radical Christian he is. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. <laughs> Man I have a comfortable life in the palace. Hey Moses why, why you want to go there and suffer? Enjoy your life in the palace. Eat the good food that you have. You have so much of respect. People salute you. And you are the next prince that who is going to be. Moses why you want to do all this foolishness? Are you crazy? Going into that wilderness. Living your luxury. You got to suffer there. Moses say, hey. I love God more than anything else. I am not being pushed. I am choosing to suffer. Amen. Amen. Philippians chapter 1 verse 29 says, For unto us it is given not only to believe, but also to suffer for the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Who told you that suffering is because you are a sinner? Who told you suffering is because of curse? Suffering for Christ is a blessing because the Bible says it is given unto you. Amen. Amen. I would rather suffer for Christ than to enjoy the pleasures with the devil. Moses, are you serious? Yes. I have chosen to suffer affliction with the people of God. I don't want to enjoy life with them and party and, and do all those things with the unbelievers. I don't want to be satisfied with my life. My satisfaction comes when I serve the Lord with the people of God. Let me tell you this. God, I won't give you the name of this person who said it, but he's a very famous guy. God is absolutely glorified in you when you are completely satisfied in Christ. Amen? Amen. When you are completely satisfied in Christ, God is glorified in you. Do you understand that? Moses is choosing to suffer with the people of God. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hit, uh, was hit three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. Where was that? Yeah, he was a proper child and they were, they, they were not afraid of the king's command. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. The pleasures of sin for a season does not satisfy you, but, but suffering affliction with the people of God gives you the utmost satisfaction in life. Amen. Suffering for the cause of Christ. 
suffering for the cause of Christ. <laughs> Do you like sin? Do you want to enjoy your life with the pleasures of sin for a season which will destroy you in the later times? Are you serious about your Christian life, dear beloveds? Men, women, young guys, boys, girls, are you serious about your life? Are you fine with you? Is your relationship with your parents right? Are you right with your parents in the house? Are you serious about your Christian life? Are you fooling around? And how is your relationship with your wife? Children, are you obedient or rebellious? When you're rebelling, you're enjoying the pleasures of sin. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You like the worldly stuff? You like worldly nerves? You love that more than God? Do you love that more than God's word? What choice are you going to make today? Are you willing to suffer for Christ? Are you willing to take up the cross daily and follow Christ? Esteeming the reproach of Christ. Greater riches. Man. What? When I read that, it, it really, it, it, it gives me goosebumps here. All my hair stands. Is esteeming the reproach of Christ's greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. He knew what is coming ahead. A suffering for Christ. Amen. Amen. By faith he forsook Egypt. Your sin. All your stupidity, naughtiness, wickedness, forsake it by faith. Rebelliousness, Forsake it by faith. By faith he forsook Egypt. Not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him. Who is invisible. Amen. Amen. His desire was Christ. Seeing him who is invisible. He saw it by faith. He desired by faith. Dear friends, Moses was a radical man. God did not just speak to him face to face as a friend, just simply. <laughs> you see what Moses was. Can God call some of you here in this congregation to be a preacher, to be a missionary somewhere? Someone raise up and say, God has called me one day to go somewhere and preach God's word and become a preacher. Are you willing to choose to suffer for Christ? Let me warn you, becoming a preacher or a missionary does not mean you're going to sleep on the bed of roses. Suffering. Oppositions, problems will come. But those things are more richer than the pleasures of sins for a season. Those things will give you an utmost satisfaction. 
esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Do you esteem the reproach of Christ or safety under your blanket among the pagans where you try to cover up yourself because you don't want to tell the world that you're a Christian? Is that what you esteem? Or you esteem Christ by suffering for Him? I leave you with these thoughts. Ready one more time. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt. Not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured a seeing him who is invisible. That's the Moses with whom God spoke as a friend face to face. Amen. Shall we pray?